Canned corn is a popular and convenient way to enjoy the sweet and flavorful taste of corn throughout the year. It was popularized by a cook stove manufacturer, Nathan Winslow, who invented a safe canning method in the 1830s, allowing the corn kernels to maintain their freshness. Now, sweet corn is found everywhere from salad and tacos to even on pizzas. It is one of the most popular vegetables in the United States when it comes to per capita consumption. But how is it made? Canned corn production begins with the careful selection of corn varieties suited for canning. Varieties with tender and sweet kernels are preferred for their taste and texture. Farmers prepare the soil by plowing and adding necessary nutrients. Corn seeds are then sown in rows with adequate spacing to facilitate healthy growth. In the United States, sweet corn seeding usually takes place in March and April each year. Currently, United States is home to the largest sweet corn crop in the world with an estimated 268,000 acres and an annual harvest of 2.9 billion pounds. As the corn plants grow, they require consistent irrigation to ensure optimal development. On average, each high-yielding corn crop uses about 600,000 gallons of water per acre. Farmers monitor the crop for pests and diseases, applying appropriate measures to protect the corn. The timing of harvesting is crucial for canned corn production. Sweet corn is typically harvested when the kernels are in the milk stage, plump and filled with sweet liquid. This is the period between mid-August to mid-October. At harvest, silks on the ear should be brown and dry. When a thumbnail is pressed into a kernel, a milky liquid should emerge, indicating the prop is ready for harvest. It is very important to harvest quickly at the proper stage because the sugars in sweet corn can rapidly convert to starch, making the corn undesirable. Mechanical harvesters are employed to gather the ears. The front part of the harvester features a specialized attachment known as a corn head. This attachment is equipped with rows of snapping rollers or snapping plates that are designed to grasp the corn stalks and gently pull the ears from the plant. As the harvester moves through the cornfield, the snapping rollers or plates engage with the corn stalks at the base of the ears. The rollers rotate, snapping the ears off the plants. The ears are then conveyed to gathering chains that guide them from the harvester towards a grain or corn transport vehicle running parallel to the harvester. The driver of the truck coordinates with the harvester operator to maintain a consistent speed and alignment. The unloading mechanism on the harvester features an adjustable spout or chute. This spout can be directed toward the truck, allowing the harvested corn to be precisely unloaded into the truck's cargo area. After harvesting, the corn ears are promptly transported to the processing facility. Efficient transportation methods are employed to minimize delays and maintain the freshness of the produce. You see, canning the corn is done in just four hours after harvesting to maintain as much of the nutritional value of the product as possible. For this reason, the corn canning factories are usually located close to the corn farms. This is the canning facility where the corn ears undergo cleaning and husking. Almost 150,000 tons of corn are canned here annually. The cobs are transported into the canning plant using a conveyor which leads to visual inspection stations. These are set up to identify any defects or abnormalities in the canned corn. This includes checking for irregularities in color, consistency, and general quality standards. After inspection is complete, the cobs are transported to a dehusking machine through a conveyor belt system. Rotating rollers or blades make contact with the ears, gently removing the outer layers of husk. Brushes or air jets may be integrated to eliminate any remaining husk particles. The dehusked corn ears exit the machine, ready for the next step. The cobs are lined up, ready to be handled by the kernel remover. The machine consists of spinning knives that strip the kernels from over 7,000 cobs an hour. Twice a day, the machines are stopped to clean and sharpen them. The corn kernels fall in the middle while the cobs themselves move to the sides. Kernels and cobs now separate and move along their separate way in the process. The kernels then enter a rotating drum that removes any particles larger than the kernels. Nothing is wasted in the process. Corn residues, leaves, and cobs are all sold as animal feed. Blanching follows the kernel removal and involves briefly immersing the corn kernels in hot water or steam. This step is crucial for deactivating enzymes that can lead to flavor and color changes, preserving the quality of the corn. The canning process begins with the preparation of a brine or syrup solution. This solution helps preserve the corn's flavor, texture, and color. Sugar, salt, and water are typically used in varying proportions to create the brine. The prepared corn kernels are then packed into cans. The cans are filled with the corn, leaving a specified headspace to accommodate thermal expansion during the canning process. This rotating filling machine can handle 300 to 450 cans per minute. The kernels which fall to the side are gathered up later and returned to the filling line. The brine or syrup solution is poured into the cans, covering the corn kernels completely. The liquid serves both as a preservative and as a medium to maintain the corn's quality. 
To remove any air trapped in the cans, a de-aeration step is often included. This helps create a vacuum seal, preventing spoilage and maintaining the integrity of the canned corn. Once filled, the cans are sealed using a specialized seaming machine. The double seaming process ensures an airtight seal, preventing contamination and maintaining the freshness of the corn. Some canning processes involve an exhausting step where cans are briefly heated to remove any remaining air. This step contributes to the preservation of the corn and prevents oxidation. The sealed cans are then subjected to a cooking process. This can involve pressure cooking or hot water bath methods depending on the specific requirements of the canned corn product. The heat destroys any remaining microorganisms and ensures a sterile environment within the can. This step is crucial because it also contributes to the shelf life of the can and ensures that the product will remain germ-free for 18 months. After cooking, the cans are rapidly cooled to room temperature. This step halts the cooking process and helps maintain the quality of the corn. Rapid cooling also prevents overcooking, ensuring that the corn retains its crispness. Throughout the canning process, rigorous quality control measures are in place. Inspections and tests are conducted to ensure that the corn meets specific standards for taste, color, texture, and safety. Metal detectors are employed to identify and remove any metal fragments that may have inadvertently entered the cans during processing. This step is crucial to prevent contamination and ensure consumer safety. Each can is weighed to confirm the correct amount of corn and brine or syrup. Labels are affixed, providing consumers with essential information such as nutritional content, expiration date, and cooking instructions. In this facility, they produce a whopping 42 million cans of corn, enabling you to enjoy the amazing flavor of sweet corn all throughout the year. If you enjoyed this video, we have plenty more like it on our channel.